This is the Great Vocal Majority Podcast. The Way the Economy Works by GreatVocalMajority.com. This is Tony Cotaspati. Thanks. This is going to be a quick primer on the economy that will help the average person understand the essentials about how the economy works, breaking it down, so that anyone can understand it and explain it. I hope you enjoy it, so let's get started. First, let's look at the government. The government, first of all, is not the economy. And government doesn't create the economy either. The economy is created by the needs of people, and we which we refer to as demand. What people need is demand. And the creation of goods and services to meet those needs is something we refer to as supply. All of this, we should remember, that the government by itself has no money of its own. Government does need money to operate, though, so where does it get the money to operate if it has no money of its own? There are basically two sources, taxes and borrowing. We all pay taxes to government and in one form or another, either income taxes, business taxes, sales taxes, gasoline taxes, and the like. There are many kinds of taxes. Also, government often needs to borrow money to fund itself and often sells bonds to do so, to get that money. And they sell the bonds to the public in order to acquire the money they need. But it's important to understand that government must either tax or borrow to get money because it has no money of its own. Next, let's turn to who is it that the government must tax? Well, as I just mentioned, government taxes people. But government can also tax businesses. And that's pretty much it. Government's tax businesses and individuals. At this point in our little primer here, it probably would be helpful to point out that in our country, or in any country for that matter, there are basically two parts to the economy. And we'll call these parts of the economy sectors. So far I've spoken mostly about the government or public sector. And as and I have referred to the people and businesses. Businesses and people who don't work in the government are referred to as the private sector. Private sector, it should also be noted, it does include businesses that are traded on the stock exchange. Just because they're publicly traded companies doesn't mean they're part of the public sector. Uh, the public sector really refers to just the government. Now, the private sector is critical to our economy because it is the private sector that creates wealth and value. New inventions, all of our manufacturing, all of our professional services, all of the innovation that comes from our economy through entrepreneurship and, and, and other things comes from the private sector. All those things that generate economic value find their origin in the private sector. That's why it's so important to have a private sector that operates at peak efficiency. Now let's take a quick look at how the private sector operates and how it grows. Let's say there is a small business entrepreneur who wants to open a bookstore. Without any guarantee of success, our fledgling business owner was, will risk his own money He'll need to do all his homework, assessing the competition, the demand for his books, and how much it's all going to cost him. Many things will need to be accounted for. Inventory, employees, rental, space for his store, taxes, among many other things. And assuming he's prepared well and his business is successful and shows a profit, this entrepreneur might actually consider at some point expanding his business, parlaying the profits from the original venture and creating new businesses or new stores to sell his books. Or maybe he wants to branch out into something entirely different. But the point is he will use those profits 
to develop new business ideas or new business ventures. If he expands, he's going to duplicate what he did in his original bookstore, and assuming his books still sell to customers, he will be able to employ people and grow his business. All along, however, none of his growth would be possible without any without his ability to keep enough of his profit so that he could reinvest it in his business to make it grow. Now let's look how he might be affected by taxes. When the government decides to raise taxes, there's an effect on both people and businesses. Using the example of the bookstore owner, money that he would have had available for business expansion is now diverted to government in the form of taxes. So he's going to have to limit or cancel any planned expansion. But people, namely the bookstore owner's customers, will also have less money to spend in his bookstore. So the bookstore owner is likely to see a drop-off in customers as well because those people must also pay higher taxes. The ultimate result is that the economy grows less because remember it's the private sector that grows the economy. But let's step back for a moment now. I don't want to leave you with the notion that all taxes uh, need to be abolished or that we we should have no taxes at all. We absolutely must have taxes. We need taxes to pay for our national defense, for social security and safety net programs. We need to pay for police, firemen, and education workers, teachers, and the like. And we also need to protect the environment, our food supply. I mean, there's a lot of things that government has a legitimate purpose in doing, and they need money to do it. So we need to have taxes in order to get them the money to do it. We also need taxes to pay for government activities that keep the marketplace fair and honest. All of these things are necessary, and none of them are cheap. So we do need taxes. But the question should always be, how much and when is it enough or too much? Does government spending grow the economy? Well, there are some people who believe in theories that say if government spends money, it helps grow the economy. This is nonsense. Government spending by itself is not a path to economic growth. Think about it for a second. If government needs an additional dollar to spend, they must either tax or borrow to get it, right? Now, let's say they tax you an additional dollar, okay? What happens? They will have spent that dollar instead of you. Is that better for the economy? How is government spending that dollar better for the economy than you spending it? The answer is, it's not better. And I can prove it to you with a little fun thought experiment that you'll see next. There are really only four ways to spend money. The first way is that you can spend money, your own money, on yourself. The second way is you can spend your money on someone else. The third way is that you can spend someone else's money on yourself. And the fourth way is you can spend someone else's money on someone else. The first way spend spending money spending your own money on yourself is actually the best way and the most economically efficient way to spend money. Because stop and think about it. When you spend your own money, you, you're looking to spend and get the most for your money or you're getting exactly what you want because you're spending your own money. That also happens to be the most efficient way to spend it. Now, look at the last way to spend money. The last way spending someone else's money on someone else is the least economically efficient way to spend money. And if you stop and think about it, of course it would be the least, the least efficient. Why? Because it's not your money that you're spending and you're not spending it on yourself, you're spending it on someone else. So you have really no skin in the game on either end. 
So, of course, it's going to be the least efficient way to spend money. This also happens to be the way government spends all of the money it does spend. And you can see quite easily from this little four-point chart why it's so important not to give government too much money to spend and to only give them the money they absolutely need to have for those things they absolutely need to do. Why does government spend so much money? Government ends up spending so much of our money. Why? Well, the short answer is, is because it's easy for politicians to promise to solve problems by throwing our money at it. And that approach has given us a great deal of debt, and it won't get better until we all understand some basics about how the economy works. In this short presentation, you learned a few key facts. You learned that the government has no money of its own, and how it must tax or borrow to pay for everything it does. You learned how taxing too much can make it harder for the economy to grow. You learned that taxes are necessary, but need to be limited to only funding things government absolutely must do. And finally, you learned that the danger of handing over our money to government is the very worst way for money to be spent. If you found this to be of any help to you, please pass it on. The American economy can grow again. We merely need to demand that our government only do the things it absolutely needs to do. We can do it. Thanks for watching and listening. This is Anthony Cotaspati for The Great Vocal Majority. <laughs>